It's spring, which makes me think of my favorite springtime vegetable, artichokes. And naturally, I think artichokes, I think Rome. So today we're gonna make two classic Roman dishes, Carchofiala Judea, which is Jewish fried artichokes, and one of my favorite pastas, cacio e pepe. First, we're gonna make the artichokes. So to clean the artichokes, we're gonna remove the outer leaves, and then we'll trim off the bottom of the artichoke, and then the top third to a half. So then we have this part exposed. Then we'll peel the stem and put it in acidulated water. Once they're clean, we can parboil them. So I have a pot of boiling water here. I'm gonna season this water with some salt. And then we can drop these artichokes in here and cook them for about four minutes. They're starting to get tender in the stem. So we'll just take them out and drain them. The Roman fried artichoke is a whole artichoke that's parboiled and fried and it opens up into this beautiful flower. So with the cut side down, just press down on the stem part and let it open up like that. Now I'm going to put these artichokes back on paper because we're about to drop them into oil. So we want to try to get them as dry as possible. I have a pot, it's about two inches deep of fry oil. And now we're gonna put these in one at a time and try to sort of smash them like we did on the board to the bottom of the pan. And that'll help the artichoke open up a little bit more. These have been frying for about two or three minutes and some of them are starting to get nice and caramelized so we'll pull the early ones out. How cute they are. So now we can season these with salt. Okay, so the last thing we need for these artichokes is to cut up some lemon. We'll just squeeze some lemon on there and then chop up some mint. And then a little bit of flaky salt. Okay, let's give it a taste. Sounds nice and crunchy. Let's squeeze a little bit more lemon. leaves get really crunchy and caramelized and the middle the heart of it is still really creamy oh my gosh so good now we can start working on our cacio e pepe so cacio e pepe is a very simple roman dish cacio is the roman word for cheese pepe black pepper We'll start by getting a pot on the stove for our pasta. And now we can grind some pepper and grate our cheese. I'm going to pound the black pepper. It's really important for this dish to use freshly pounded black pepper. You don't want to use the store-bought pre-ground pepper. It won't give you nearly as much flavor. And when your main dish is cheese and pepper, you really want those flavors to be strong. to grate some Pecorino Romano. I'm using all Pecorino Romano for this recipe. I'm not going to use any Parmesan. So I'm going to pre-grate about four ounces. Our water is boiling, so now we can season it with some salt. I'm not going to make it as salty as I normally would because we're adding all that really salty Pecorino. I'm using Bucatini for this. That's the spaghetti with the little hole in the middle. I really like Cacio e pepe with a long noodle because I like to twirl it. Um, and this gives a little bit more texture than a spaghetti. So we can get this in the water. I'm also using a really small amount of water. This is a pretty small pan. You could go a little bigger. But I really want to concentrate the starches because this pasta, it's really important to get a lot of starch in your pasta water. 
I'm going to add a few tablespoons of olive oil to the saute pan here. And we're gonna start building the base of our sauce. I'm going to add some black pepper. And this will help um, really perfume that pepper flavor throughout the whole pasta. It toasts it, it permeates into the oil, and it'll help give that nice bit of spice. And then to this, we're gonna add some butter. Cheeky little knob. And let that melt a little bit, and then add some pasta water here. let that butter melt into there. And this is gonna be the base of our sauce. So we're kind of letting the water and butter and oil start emulsifying. It's been seven minutes, so now it's go time on the pasta. This is where my adrenaline always starts to pick up a little bit. So I'm transferring the noodles into our pot that has the pasta water and butter and oil and we'll start mounting our sauce. So we're going to add quite a bit more pasta water. In this pasta the water is so important in making a good emulsion. Now I will slowly start adding in our grated cheese. We want to slowly add in the cheese so it doesn't get clumpy on us, which would just be a disaster. Turn the heat off. So now we're just using the re residual heat of the noodle and the water. Here we're just looking for a sauce that really is coating the noodle and the cheese is all melted, and we have like a really creamy, rich, glossy pasta. Which, dare I say, we have. Yum. I am gonna add a little bit more water as pasta cools, and especially this being such a cheesy, cheesy sauce. The cheese will solidify, and you'll end up with a really tight pasta. So we'll Loosen it up a little bit more. Ooh, this looks so good and glossy. Now we can plate, plate up a bowl. And then we can top it with some more grated pecorino some fresh black pepper. Oh, it smells so good. Pecorino is like a super strong, salty, sheepy cheese. This pasta is so simple. It's just cheese and pepper, really. But this real like magic happens with the pasta water and toasting the pepper and creating this emulsion. It's like, it shines beyond its ingredients.